Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Difference World YouTube channel. I hope you all out there are having a wonderful day and if not, you better be manifesting, planning, and preparing for a better one because it's surely coming to you all for sure. All right, everybody. So for those that are new and to my YouTube channel, welcome. Um, again, yeah, my name is Different. I'm an author, motivational speaker, and CEO of Third Eye Entertainment, LLC, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. And so for those that are uh, first time coming to my YouTube channel, welcome. Happy to have you. Definitely before you leave, hit that subscribe button and notification. So uh, the next time, you know, you see me pop up with another vlog, you guys uh, would be notified, yeah? But uh, if this is more than uh, your second time returning, welcome back, all my subscribers. I appreciate the love and support. Thank you guys for coming back and rocking out with your girl. Uh, it's Tuesday, so you know here in Difference World, we do Tuesday social awareness content. And so for today's vlog, it's finally going to be uh, my vlog in tailoring a confessions of a former foster kid, i.e. me. I was a former foster kid. I spent four years in uh, foster care in the state of Texas, and I aged out at the age of 18. And uh, because of that, um, it, it turned into a blessing in disguise for me. And so I'll get into that a little bit. Um, download the vlog, but before uh, we get deep into it, uh, let me just uh, disclaim, put it out there before I get into uh, this segment. I want to uh, surely disclose that I, before you know I get into the topic, this is a sensitive topic. Um, this is a, a, a sensitive topic for me, and this is for others. And so, before we get deep into it. I want to just, you know, put it out there that I'm not trying to offend nobody, any foster parents, foster kids, anybody that, that's, that's a part of the foster care system. Um, I'm just speaking my truth, my experience, and what I've been through within those four years of spending in care. Uh, I'll be sharing some testimonies. No, I will not be sharing names and, and, and locations of this, that, and the third, so don't ask in the comments. Um, I don't live in the past to hold any type of grudges, anything that happened to me or anything people have done to me, I don't forgive and move on. Um, I'm just sharing my story in hopes that it will inspire others uh, that are going through the same similar situation that I have went through. So that is why uh, I'm giving you guys my confessions, you know, from being in uh, foster care. Uh, and so, with that getting said, uh, let's uh, start it off, you guys, with some facts about uh, foster care that I found from the American Society of uh, Positive Care for Children uh, in 2022. I found, uh, let's see, uh, over 400,000 kids uh, in the foster care system. Uh, about 45% of them uh, live with non-relative foster families. About 32% are in uh, what is called like a kinship foster family. That's when they go and stay with their actual blood relatives, but they're still considered a ward of the state of Texas. So about four, th 33, 32% um, of kids that are in the system actually still live with their family, so to speak. Um, let's see, about another 23%, looking at numbers down here, so I'm looking down. <laughs> Gotta get my facts right, right? Um, they stay in institutions such as RTC, shelters, group homes. Um, about 10% of foster kids spend more than five years in the system uh, on, on average. Uh, what else? About 10 to 20, um, what was it? What was it? Damn. Kid, uh, a foster kid can spend on average about 12 to 20 months in foster care, as well as, not it's all, not all bad news, about 51% of kids who end up in foster care end up being adopted, and as well as 52% of kids that enter um, foster care end up returning back home to their biological family. So there's some light at the end of the rainbow when it comes to you know being in foster care. There's some good with the bad. Um, for me, when I came into the foster system, it was not by choice. I ended up um, being in care, or put, in, put into care by a family member who did it secretly. They did not tell my other family members what they were doing. Uh, none of them knew where I was for six months. Um, and within those six months, I tried my hardest to come home, like working with the caseworkers I had, trying to find out numbers. And mind you, this was in 20, 2005, March 2005, uh, is when I actually entered care. And so this is right before 
you know, iPhone and Apple took over. We were still doing, you know, line wire and, and net gear and shit. And so <laughs> uh, I didn't know numbers like that and, and having any saving your phone like that. That wasn't available for me. I was still doing little Virgin Mobile prepaid phones back then. But uh, in any case, um, within those six months, I found out from another foster kid that if you age out of care, then the state of Texas would pay for your tuition to college. And so right then and there, you know, a light bulb went out in my head and I just figured, shit, let me use these street smarts. You know, I spent three years, you know, living from pillow to post, you know, sleeping at, you know, buses and parks and, and cars and shelters and even in a crack house. And man, I was tired of that. You know, it was hard for me as, you know, an 11, 12 year old girl walking to school early in the morning and being approached and followed by grown men, you know, asking me, hey, baby girl, you need a ride? And, you know, would follow me. They would clearly see that, you know, I was an underage girl. And uh, to the point where I had actually started walking with switchblades to school. And when I would get to school and have to go to the metal detector, I would just toss it beforehand. But that's how it was for me for the, you know, first three years of my adolescence, you know, from age 11 to 14. And I got tired of that. As well as I saw myself, I seen if I were to go back to that situation, I would have became, you know, a teen mom. I wouldn't have probably finished school, been a dropout. And I, I seen me going down that road. And so staying in foster care was the best option for me at that time. And I'm glad that I did it because once, you know, I aged out, I ended up going to San Houston State University. So shout out to the Bearcats. Ended up getting my degree in international business. Um, started my own student organization as well as uh, with that organization that's how my motivational speaking bug started you know we it was the organization title paid for it we worked with kids that were in foster care as well as high schoolers and we would go to different high schools speaking with them about the importance of education and, and furthering their goals and sharpening their tools and i would share my testimony with those students and they would come to me and say you know afterwards hey i'm going through the same thing or i didn't know the state of texas would pay for my tuition to college, I'm gonna go now. And so that is where my motivational book was planted. And then I also got the opportunity to travel abroad. You know, my junior, senior year, uh, I went, spent a semester over in South Korea. And I went to Daegu, excuse me, it was in Daegu, but Kim Young University is the name of the university. So I spent four months over there exploring a whole different culture and new language. And mind you, here I am a black, you know, ghetto girl from, you know, the hood, Fifth Ward in Houston, Texas. And here I am in a whole different culture in a different country, learning new languages and things. And so I never thought that was possible. And that in itself opened up so many doors for me because I got to travel to other countries. And fast forward to, look at me now, you know, damn near 50 countries under my belt. And so um, what I went through, you know, that was a blessing in disguise. And that four years of being in foster care, yes, it was hell. When I initially got into it, um, they they wanted they put me on medication, claiming you know I was depressed or you know had behavioral problems, and um, I often I found out you know foster parents were making you know buku money from us, and so I feel like hey these people making money off of us, I'm gonna get some out the deal as well, and so me going through those four years and being able to you know have the state pay for my tuition, I felt like that was my due just for going through what I had gone through and, you know, having these foster parents make money off of me and having the state making money off of me and, you know, being shuffled around, um, that's often tied into why I lashed out as well. You know, a lot of the times when you're in foster care, mind you, you already have a lot of issues coming into the system and <laughs> being in the system, being shuffled around, you know, being turned into a number and, and losing your name and having so many kids you gotta live with and coexist with, it's, it's hell on you, it's hell on your mental. And for me, uh, it forced me to be secluded and aloof into myself. I didn't trust people. I felt that you know it, it wasn't gonna last long. There was no point in me getting to know anybody because I wasn't gonna be there any long. And so, and for the most part, it was true. Uh, oftentimes, I would you know sabotage you know, uh, the good things that I had going for me because, it, you know, it was too good to be true. As funny as you, as crazy as you believe, uh, I was actually placed in good foster homes. However, for me, like I said, I, I came from a chaotic background and, and coming from that environment and being placed in, you know, good, 
clean, you know, Christian foster uh, homes and, and good school districts. For me, I wasn't used to it and I didn't feel that I was worthy of it and didn't deserve it as well as the people who were providing it for me weren't really doing it for me. They were doing it for other uh, ulterior motives. And so I didn't feel like it was genuine. So oftentimes I would squander it. And a lot of foster pe kids that were in that, that predicament and that situation did the same thing. Um, mind you, we're teenagers, we're going through the motions, trying to find out who we are. And so that mixed with, you know, being away from my family and being put with another family, that, that ties into it. Now, of course, that would that cause anybody, <laughs> especially a child, uh, any, uh, you know, some, some traumatization, man. But by the grace of God, that's, that's, that's all, that's all this created, all this that you guys see me having is because of him, God. He's the one that brought me through it, and he's keep keeping me going through it, and he's going to take me further. And so I say this for any foster kid out there that's going through it and that's in the system and feeling like you're not going to make it and, and, and there's no end to it, it is. You just have to believe and hold on that things, if it doesn't last long, this too shall pass. I was going through the same thing that you was going through, going to those different schools, having to, you know, come up with different lifestyles and personalities, lying about, you know, your family and friends because you didn't want them to look at you different. And so I understand what you were going through, but just know once you get through that, that phase and that chapter, it's over and done with, and you never have to go back to it ever again, okay? Just know that, and again, it's okay to not be okay, but never sit there and not be okay. And also, before I go any deeper, you guys, I'm going to stop right here and hit you guys with a... Um, a the excuse me, motivation of all I found for those who are feeling, you know, that this is the end of the world for them in this type of situation. So check it out. And when I come back on, we'll talk a little bit more about it. Yep. Yeah? Here it is. What do you do when your battle chooses you? What do you do when something shows up on your doorstep? that you did not directly cause, choose, or definitely anticipate. Life is not always easy. In fact, some of you today, you're here and you're going through the toughest season of your life. There will be seasons where we will suffer. There will be seasons of real pain. And the question is, how will you respond in those moments? Life is hard sometimes. Easy. It's not an option, but it's worth fighting, it's worth believing, it's worth giving yourself a chance, it's worth mustering yourself up, standing up inside yourself, it's worth fighting relentlessly, never giving up, it's worth it, you can do it, you can do it. There's problems that we go through that cause stress worry, anxiety, and fear, but you might be in the battle of your life, I want to encourage you. It's not about what's happening around you. It's always about what's happening inside of you. Just because you feel afraid doesn't mean you have to be afraid. Just because you feel discouraged doesn't mean you have to be discouraged. Just because you have fear doesn't mean fear has to have you. The sentence out of your mouth is a story that you are putting out. I'm not going to make it. I quit. Let's get a divorce. Business is never coming back. We've lost too many people. I've made too many mistakes. I'm a failure. Nobody can help me. I've done too many bad things. I don't know what's coming out of your mouth, but it's a death sentence. And as you continue to confess it, and as you continue to declare it, well, don't be surprised when it becomes true in your life. We have to make sure that whenever I feel, when I think a death sentence, I must speak a life sentence. Oh, I'm feeling the sentence of death. I'm feeling the thoughts of anxiety. I'm feeling the thoughts that I'm done. I feel like I've been used and it hurts and it's difficult, but when that happens, I start speaking out a life sentence. No, I'm just gonna keep showing up. No, I'm gonna get back up. The righteous man, he falls seven times, but he gets back up. Never give up, never give in, because skill can't get you past certain things. Quickness, agility can't get you, you gotta have mental toughness. Pain ain't permanent. 
Your pain ain't permanent. You can get through this. You bigger than your pain. You better than that. Come on, you need to remember, this is not the first time you cried. This is not the first time you were short of breath. This is not the first time you didn't see a way clear. This is not the first time you were hurt. This is not the first time your heart was broken. This is not the first time you didn't have enough money. This is not the first diagnosis that came up from behind. Say, I'm gonna live to tell the story. This too shall pass. I will remain. I'm not gonna quit. Every one of my burdens, there's a blessing on the inside of it. If you don't quit, you will win, baby. You gonna work through this. You gonna get up, you gonna get dressed, you gonna get out, and you gonna do what you've been called to do. You gonna be what you called me, and you gonna prove that everybody that tried to break you, everybody that tried to stop you, everybody that tried to kill your dream, you gonna prove all of them wrong. Just keep coming back. If you got nothing left to give, just show back up. Half of life, man, is just showing up. And I'm telling you right now, don't give up. I'm telling you right now, don't give in. Get through it. And if you can get through it, if you can work through your pain, I'm guaranteeing you on the other side is a reward. Pain is not permanent. Pain is temporary. All right, guys, welcome back. So I hope you enjoy uh, as much as I did in, in looking at that inspirational clip uh, for those who are in foster care right now or have been through the system and still uh, feeling that affliction from that, that trauma that they had been through. Um, just know that what you went through and what you're going through, you will get past it and you are stronger than you are. Like, like my mama told me flat out, what don't break a bitch will make a bitch. And so what doesn't break you will make you stronger. And so... I, I, I want to share these resources specifically. I often share mental health resources, but for the teens out there, uh, people that are even in foster, uh, not, not just the teens, because it's, it's hell on foster parents too. Make no mistake about it, man. You have to have patience, a big heart, and a big home too, because <laughs> you, you got to pass the background uh, to, to let you know kids that are not yours biologically into your home. And I don't, I want to take this time to say it's not, this video is not meant to bash any foster parent out there and scorn you guys and make you guys look like all of you are out there for paycheck. No, you are not. And I applaud those who open up their homes and their hearts to these kids who need it. And you guys love on them like no other because it is hard. It is heavy. I'm not going to lie. I gave some of my foster parents a hard time. And the, the last person, I, the last foster parent I had, oh man, I cussed out so bad. And she literally pushed me out of her house and closed the door. Um, but I did that because I was I was scared. I was about to age out of foster care and in my on my way to college, and I didn't know if she was going to be there with me. And so, like I said, rather than just letting somebody else decide when it's time to sink my ship, I'm gonna sink my own. And so, I messed up that relationship because I was I was scared. I didn't know where it was going to go. So I decided to end it. But by God's grace, you know, what's for you is for you. And we still have a, a strong relationship to this day. I didn't talk to her through all throughout my college, but it, it wasn't until I graduated and was a grown woman and woman enough to call her and apologize to her. Um, and until this day, you know, my last foster parent that I had, you know, we're really good friends. And so um, it's not all bad. There are some, some foster parents out there who got who really have it in their heart to help. And so I thank you guys. I applaud you. My prayers and thoughts are with you because this isn't an easy job. and It's not an easy task to deal with. There are some kids out there with some really, very, very tough situations and that are a hard case to handle. I mean, you, you, honestly, you just can't help. That's the truth about it as well. It's a lot of kids in the system that get lost and you want to help them, but you can't. And so that's, that's the truth of the matter of that, that as well. Um, as well as the, there are a lot of you know myths and notions about what goes on in foster care and foster home, uh, especially when it goes on about sexual abuse uh, with other foster kids. Uh, now me, I've never experienced that, luckily, um, but I've had heard stories about that and um, from what I've recently, well not recently, but what I had been told, what I can remember, um, it mostly probably might have gone on if you were in a different foster home, say if so, a respite uh, for those uh, who go to a different foster home to give their foster parents a break. That's mostly maybe where it may have occurred. 
uh, when you're in a different setting. And so it's not as if you go to a foster home and you get sexually abused by that foster parent or those or other foster kids. It's when you're around different settings and people that don't know you. And it's not necessarily the kid's fault. Maybe they're just doing something, you know, that they were taught. And so, uh, but it's unfortunate that it's happened, but it does happen. That's just this is how it is, um, but I thank God that it never happened to me, but it is, that is true, it does happen, unfortunately. Um, a lot of the times, people ask me, as a foster family, former foster kid, different, why you don't give back, why you not a former foster, why you not a foster parent? Well, for one, because I know karma going to come back on my ass, I know, <laughs> I gave them people hell, and so if I go and be a foster parent, these kids going to give me hell my damn self, so I can't, I can't do that. But um, no, for, for me, what I would, my path is, I, I definitely plan on giving back to the foster care community. And without them, there would be no me. Um, it is my hope and prayer and plan that once my business, Third Eye Entertainment, takes off and gets more established uh, to where we're able to give back uh, sufficiently to the foster care community, then I will. Um, but as far as being a foster parent, uh, I'm not even on my own parent shit. I, I can better take care of myself, you know, so <laughs> that's also why I'm not a foster parent, but I do have, um, uh, intentions of giving back to the community and, and having community involvement. I have not forgotten about them. Uh, and so this is also another way of giving back to the community as well as, uh, before this clip ends or this vlog ends, I want to take this time to dedicate it to uh, Makaya Bryan, uh, the young lady that lost her life last year, who's a former fo uh, foster in foster care. Um, I can totally understand in that situation where she was coming from, and, and I had all, as well been in that situation. And so, um, luckily for me, it did not turn out that way it did for her. But um, I understand, I can imagine, you know, the fear that she was feeling and the stress that she was going through and having people gang up on her and not having her actual family around that is like that uh, when you're, you're in these situations and these alternative families. Um, well, as uh, for the teens out there that may need these resources, and again, just know that it's okay to not be okay, but never not sit there and be okay for anybody that's under the age of 18 uh, and that's happening to listening to these vlogs or anybody that you know <laughs> that's under the age of 18 and needs to hear this, please know that it's okay to not be okay, but never sit there and not be okay. If you need to, you can call the teen crisis hotline at one 800 682 Six nine three four again. That's one eight hundred six eight two six nine three four, or you can text seven four one seven four one, or you can go online to empowermyteen.com. Again, just remember that it's okay to not be okay, but again, just don't sit there and not be okay. If you need somebody to talk to about uh, any thoughts that you're having, again, feeling suicidal or being bullying or depression, talk with somebody about it. Um, therapist, family member, friends, whatever it is that you have to do, you know, to free yourself from that mental bondage, do it and know that you are not alone, okay? And whatever that you are going through, you will get through it. This too shall pass. You just have to tell yourself over and over again, this too shall pass, okay? And just know that whatever it is that you want to be in life, you can be it. No matter where you come from, what you've been through, your status, your color, your creed, your religion, your sexual orientation, whatever the case may be, it does not determine your height of success and how far you go in life. Only you can determine that. So believe in yourself and bump everything else. Okay? And so we're going to end out that, uh, my confessions of a former foster kid on uh, that note with, um, with you guys and thank y'all so much for listening to my story and uh this was a process for me to share uh coming up with all these information you know looking back on the past and thinking about this it was a lot of this stuff i put out of my mind and moved on from but uh just bringing it back up again and, and not feeling sad about the situation and able to look back on it like wow look at me now look how good I good how good god has been to me and how far he has brought me that's how I'm able to have peace about it and move on in life. Just look at me. There's no need for me to be mad and sad about the way life went in the past because look where I'm at now. I'm nowhere near where I used to have been. I'm not where I want to be, but at least I'm not where I used to be. <laughs> you know, I used to be a, a, a full-time job, a, a headache. But thank God, you know, I'm a work in progress and I'm going to keep going. Um, and I hope and pray that you guys out there do the same. 
uh, stay on your hustle and your grind. Like I said, you either on that come up like Cardi B or they come back like Robert D. There is no more in between. And so for me, with that being said, you guys, I'm going to get on my grind right here and go ahead and direct y'all to my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Again, my book is written to inform and encourage thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. And so again, be advised that's intended for a mature audience. So if you can't take this heat, then do not bother the kitchen. Do not bother coming to this kitchen. But if so, go on over to my website, differenceworld.net, and get your copy of my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, you guys. Um, as well as you can check me out on all my other social media handles, my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, definitely my YouTube channel. Don't forget that. Hit that subscribe button, you guys. I truly appreciate it. As well as that notification button so you guys will be aware when I'm dropping these content. You guys can check it out and share it with others and comment, you guys. I do appreciate you guys interacting with me. I love it. Uh, keep it coming. As well as, real quick, now let me, I never forget this. <laughs> Let's do a mental health check for those out there that may need it. Again, like I said, it is okay to not be okay, but never, ever, ever sit there and not be okay. If you're feeling so suicidal, feeling depression, bullying, anxiety, any type of anything, man, relapse, recovery, whatever, man, just know it's okay to not be okay, but don't sit there and not be okay. Go get help. Go do whatever it is that you have to do to free yourself from that mental bondage and so that you don't go off the deep end on hopefully, and I pray that you do not take others with you. If you need or need some, know somebody who does, share these resources with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255 or they can call or text 988 or you can text 741741. For those that would prefer to go online, you can go to mentalhealthishealth.us or you can go to 988lifeline.org or for those that are outside the U.S., you can go to encounseling. Dot com Again, in counseling is spelled E N C O U N S E L I N G dot com. And again, remember, guys, it's okay to not be okay, but do not sit there and not be okay. All right. And with that being said, we're going to close out this uh, uh, vlog with you guys. I truly, again, appreciate it. All the love and support. Uh, sharing my confessions of a former foster kid. Here it is. Uh, for those of former foster kids out there, uh, if you happen to see this video, please share, you know, your comments and your testimonies with me. I love to hear, you know, your stories and your, your, your triumphs out of your tribulations, man. I know I can't be the only one who's made it out. And so I want to see others out there as well and, and hope to inspire others that may be going through this situation. And so again, for those who are feeling they are destined for greatness in life, you got to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And then it will surely come to you guys. For sure. Difference world. Come and learn. Peace. What if what if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift? It's a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America. Through graphic but provocative illustration, What If provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. What If, a controversial paradigm shift by author different Go to differenceworld.net.